So our second exercise of the week is going to be mandalas and these are really nice to relax and draw and that's why I've called it mindful mandalas because you can really focus on the task at hand. So here's a sketchbook that's a few years old that's got a few of mine in that I've done. And every single one of them looks different. And they all start with a circle. Now at this point you can use your compasses to draw a circle. So just open them out as large as you'd like. Um, place the point down in the centre of the page. And make sure you've got plenty of space to draw. And if you need to move to get closer to the centre you can do. So I'm going to draw a circle. And then I want some guidelines. So I've got the little point where the, uh, the point of the compass went in. So I'm going to change the width of these. I'm just going to narrow it a little bit. And put that point back right in the same spot. And I'm going to keep narrowing this. and drawing little circular guidelines for myself. And you create a little bullseye shape like this. And then this one I'm going to divide into eight. So I'm going to use my ruler and divide it down the center. And again, I'm just using a pencil for this because I want to be able to rub the lines out afterwards. And then I'm going to divide it across the way. So I'm going to draw, divide it horizontally. And then I'm going to divide each of those portions into two again. You can measure this if you want to, to get it exactly right. But I'm not too worried about this one. There we go. So you can do that, but if you don't have the compasses, then don't worry about it because you can still make a really nice mandala just by freehanding your guidelines. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to freehand a circle. And then I'm going to do the concentric circles. And then I'm going to do the straight lines, exactly the same way as I did before, but this time I'm not going to measure them. There we go. And you'll see you get very, you get very similar results, but they will look slightly different. So this will have a much more natural, organic look. And the others, and the ones where you've used the compass and the ruler will look a lot more structured and maybe a little neater. But there's no right or wrong here, it's just a case of what your personal preference is. So that's all I'm using with the pencil. Now I'm going to switch to a pen. And I've got some different size pens here. If you've just got one size, that's absolutely fine. But I'm going to pick um, uh, either a 0.2 or a 0.3. Uh, width pen. But then I've also got some very skinny ones and I've got some thicker ones and I'm going to use those a little later on. I'm going to take my 0.3 pen and I'm going to start in the centre and all I'm going to do is make a mark in one of the, uh, what was they say quadrants, but they're um, octrants or something. Um, but yeah, one of the segments. And then I'm just going to make exactly the same mark in all the others. So I don't have a plan for this, I don't know what it's going to look like. I'm just going to start in the centre and make a mark and fill in the centre bit and then move towards the outside. All the marks I make are going to be variants on very, very simple themes. So there is 
a circle. There's a petal shape where you do a curved line in one direction and a curved line in the other. There are combinations of straight lines. So you could do a point like this or you could do several straight lines joined together. You could join your curved lines at the top like this or you could make them convex and join them like this. And then you can get into doing S-shaped curves like this, which you can double and create a little curved petal, or you can join at the top and create a little dome shape. And then you can do combinations of these. So you can do your two curved lines to make like a half circle and then you can make another one and you can make another one and then you might join those together with two little s-shaped curves like this and so use these simple shapes and forms simple types of lines and join them together to make more complex ones so I'm going to start in the center and I'm going to do a little petal shape like that that goes from the center and then goes out to this line that I've drawn. So I've done this in one segment so now I'm going to do it in all the rest. And I'm going to continue working out from the center drawing simple shapes based on either straight or curved lines until I get to the edge. You can see that I'm not making any complicated shapes on their own. I'm either just doing a little curved line or a little straight line. What I like to do if I'm drawing a long line is to put a little dot and then I can draw my lines towards the dot. So I put a little dot where I want my lines to go and then I can draw towards that dot. Sometimes I'll put the dots all the way around and then draw the lines towards them. And you may think that some of your lines are not very straight or not very neat, but don't worry, when we get to the end you'll see the overall effect and you won't notice the individual little things that weren't quite right. You'll just see the, the big picture. So don't worry about the um, the, the little lines. Um, in fact, if you, um, yeah, if you used a ruler for this, you'd end up with something with no character. So um, I quite like that um, I've got some mistakes in here and some things are a little smaller and some things are a little bigger because I think it adds to the overall effect at the end. I think it makes it look more interesting. And when you're doing a mandala like, like this, it's a really good idea to repeat the same shapes over and over and it gives a continuity to your drawing. So I've used these little petal shapes here and here and here and now here and I'll keep using them right to the end.
So now I've gone all the way to the edge. And this is looking okay, but I think it could do a lot better. And that's where those other pens come in. So I've got a thicker pen and a much thinner pen. And I'm going to add some details. So I'll use the thicker pen to colour in some areas and to make some of the lines thicker. And then I'll use the thinner pen to do little areas of detail and uh, to do like lots of little lines or lots of little circles or, or something like that that can just add a lot of interest to the drawing. So now I'm going in with the thinner pen and I'm going to draw some detail into some of these areas. It's much easier drawing little lines like this towards yourself, or I find it easier anyway. So I'm going to turn my page. We just keep on going until we're really happy with how it's all looking and it looks interesting and full of life and movement and your eye moves from place to place around the image. You'll reach a point where it's kind of satisfying. But be patient with yourself because a lot of the places on the way to it being satisfying, it doesn't look very satisfying, it just looks a bit of a mess. But just keep going. And at this point I'm looking at the whole image and seeing if there are any bits that look a little um, empty, if there are bits that could do with a little bit more detail, and if there are, I'll just go in and just add something in there. And I could go on, but I think for this image I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to rub away my pencil marks and, uh, and that's it. Tomorrow's exercise is going to be fantasy florals. So yeah, here's a sneak peek of what is coming up. So yeah, so that's it. Um, if you would like to get a high resolution version of this, image so you could print it out and colour it in, uh, plus some other images of mine, all of the ones from this series, uh, plus some older mandalas. Um, they're all available as part of my Patreon account for my uh, dollar a month subscribers. So uh, if you wanted to help me out then you could sign up for that and uh, all of those would be available for you. I look forward to seeing what you make. So thanks very much for watching. Okay, Take care, bye bye.